Hi, Gordon Palmer here, Minister at Clement Church, and welcome to the uh, Clement Calling that's going out on Friday the 23rd of April. Um, one of the things about the 23rd of April is that um, May is not very far away. I just want to mention a couple of things coming up at the beginning of May. Um, on Sunday the 2nd of May, we'll be beginning the opportunities to meet again for at least some of the congregation in the building. We're going to have services here, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. However, we are still limited by, by certain restrictions of the lockdown, so um, you need to wear masks, you need to keep distance, and, and so on. Um, and we need to know um, if you're coming. So anyone who wants to come either on the 2nd of May or on the subsequent, week, uh, subsequent Sunday, you have to contact the church office. The um, telephone number is 238 um, The Email address is office at claremontparishchurch.co.uk. Um, so please get in touch with Leslie in the office and, and say if there's a Sunday you're wanting to attend. You cannot put your name down for two or three Sundays at a time. Just you can only be on one list. So if it's for the second, then, and if it's for the ninth, another time, but not if your name's down for the second, if you see what I mean. So what a time, and the services were short reflective service um, at two o'clock in the afternoon and that begins on Monday the 2nd of May. Also on Monday the 2nd of May, we begin a new series in our morning services. The morning service will still be being um, uh, recorded and will be going out at the usual time of half past 10 and, and be available for the rest of the week. And on the 2nd of May, we start a series looking at the small book towards the back of the New Testament, the book of James. And the five-week series that we have in James is also for our next focus group series. For those of you involved in the focus groups, the study materials are, are available. Um, they're ready and good to go. And so just if you haven't got them and need them, just get in touch with the, the church office. And again, Leslie can sort that out. But I want to encourage others to think about um, being part of a focus group and, and looking at the book of James with others. Um, it's important that... Um, we're able to share faith with others, to encourage one another and build one another up. We've been looking at that at a um, service on, on First Thessalonians. It's uh, going out the 25th. It's an instruction. And the theme of James is, is actually very important. It's about the importance of being tested for our faith. And testing can be a good thing, can it? Um, got here my MOT certificate for the car. Now, quite frankly, I don't particularly enjoy that the car has to go for its MOT. It seems to me, you know, it makes a bit of trouble taking it there and it inevitably um, involves a bit of uh, expense. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of having to do it, but I would rather it was done. I don't really want to be in an untested car that's not roadworthy. And I don't want to be driving on roads where none of the other cars have been tested and none of them are roadworthy. It's, it's important that we test things. It's important that things are, are checked to see, is this real? And that's true about faith as well. We only, we only really know if our faith is genuine faith if, it, if and when it gets tested. Now, the testing takes many different shapes and forms and through five weeks in the book of James we're going to look at different ways in which we're tested but I want to encourage you think about the series and say if you've not been part of a focus group get in touch through the office and, and think about it because I would hate to think that some of us are going along blissfully never having had the equivalent of our MOT and and not knowing for sure that you're on Jesus' side and to receive his, and going to receive his crown of life, his eternal salvation. There's a place for testing. There's a point to it. There's a purpose for it. Stick with us through that series. And then finally, in this uh, Claremont Calling, um, <clears throat> just so two things. One to say that we'll do one next week because there's some more things later on in uh, May that I want to highlight as well. And I'll do that in a claimant calling next week. But also from time to time, we have um, 
featured um, a short video from, from Solas, from Andy Bannister and Dundee, sharing um, aspects of the, uh, the way of the Christian faith and how it relates to today's world. And, and this one is, is one that's come out very recently. So please enjoy. I think it's got something very important to say for us. Bye-bye. Doesn't Christianity impede moral progress? That was a question one atheist friend recently asked me. And there's a few things lying behind that question. For some time now, many atheists have argued, look, we don't need God to be good. You know, we can be good without religion. And then uh, Richard Dawkins, in his best-selling book, The God Delusion, a few years ago, took that slightly further. And he went, actually, you know, morality improves on its own. He talked about the moral zeitgeist, how you know, year after year after year, as a society, we're progressing morally. And uh, religion has been holding that back, but now we're, we're free of that. And then some atheists, Atheists have even gone even further and said, you know, exactly, it's religion that holds back that progress. And if we just broke the shackles of religion, we could progress to utopia. So does Christianity impede moral progress? Well, there's a few questions I'd want to raise there. First thing I want to say is, that, you know, there've been many uh, books written on this subject by atheists pointing out just how much of the morality and the things we take for granted here in the West are profoundly Christian ideas. So someone like Tom Holland, who's an agnostic historian, wrote a massive book a couple of years ago called Dominion, really just looking at how all the things we take for granted in the West, uh, from healthcare to human rights to justice, are actually profoundly Christian ideas. Or the French historian Luc Ferry, in his book A Brief History of Thought, uh, goes a similar direction, pointing out that in the ancient world it simply was not taken for granted that all human beings are equal. Everybody assumed that slavery was okay. Everybody assumed that some people had more value than others. And then Christianity, with its belief that all people, no matter what their background or gender or ability or race, uh, were all equal before God, the foundation for human rights. Luc Ferry, the atheist, says, you know, that's an idea for which atheists should be profoundly grateful. So that's the first thing. Actually, our society is far more Christian than many of my atheist friends have realised. But then secondly, the moment you talk about moral progress, that raises an interesting question, doesn't it? Because progress implies a destination. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a hiker, I love walking in the countryside. And if I was to ring my wife halfway through my hike to kind of catch up, and my wife was to say, oh Andy, how is the hike going? And I would say, well, I'm progressing. She'll assume that means I'm nearer the summit of the mountain, not lost in the woods with my lunch stolen by a pack of marauding squirrels. Progress implies that we're getting somewhere. And the question I want to say to my atheist friends is, if there is no God, what the heck is the destination? There's nowhere we're supposed to be. We're just blundering around in the wilderness. So that progress language is interesting. Which brings me to my final point. The, uh, the Christian writer and, uh, and philosopher C.S. Lewis once offered a very helpful analogy to help us think about morality and ethics and all of this stuff. He said, imagine a, a fleet of ships, perhaps a military fleet, out there on the ocean. And he said that fleet of ships needs three things in order to function well. Firstly, he said, each ship needs instructions about what to do if it breaks down, how to maintain itself. And those instructions about how each ship should maintain itself, said Lewis, that kind of equates to personal ethics, uh, the kind of ethics that tells us how to look after ourselves, how to behave well, and so on and so forth. But then secondly, he said, that fleet of ships needs instructions about what happens as they interact with each other. Who gives way to whom if two ships are on the same trajectory? And Lewis said, that's rather like societal ethics. We need ethics that tells us how we behave when we interact with each other. But he said, beyond all of that, that fleet of ships needs something even more important than those first two categories. That fleet of ships need to know why they are out on the ocean in the first place and what the mission is. And similarly for us as human beings, unless we know what the purpose of life is, why we're here, what the good life looks like, what it's all about, then any talk of morality or progress or everything simply collapses. And of course the Christian faith offers some profoundly helpful answers to that question and some of those you can check out in other videos in the short answer series.